So, uh, hi, Jeffrey. I'm Mark. <laughs> hey, Mark. Good to meet you. Uh, Jeff, Jeffrey. Uh, prefer Jeffrey. Jeffrey is good. Uh, yeah. So, uh, a, a, um, before we get into this too far, um, I don't know where I'm going to start cutting. So, uh, this could go on. I don't know, gotcha. but, uh, a, thank you for volunteering to do the panel. That is not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, How'd you even get into that? Um, I didn't have, I didn't have to ask you, uh, what do you mean? Uh, how, how I got a panel approved. Yeah. yeah you just what, reached out to him or what? Well, yeah. So, um, out here in Salt Lake, our event, uh, the, the guy that owns that, uh, bought, what is it? It was, it was the Imaginarium or something mm-hmm. like that. They own like three conventions. One was ATL, one was Tampa Bay and one's Indiana. Okay. Um, so I know that guy. And so all of the admin stuff goes through the people here at HQ. Mm-hmm. So I was like, uh, I knew they owned it. So I just reached out to the people here going, Hey, who, uh, what's the process for doing, you know, asking for a panel down there. And they're like, oh, use this form. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. So, uh, and then I was like, okay, who do I need to talk to about uh, uh, moderating a panel? And they're like, oh, mm-hmm. talk to this person. I'm like, okay. So I got three panels to moderate. I got you. Uh, but yeah, this one, I was just like, I just couldn't find enough people. And I was like, ah, damn it. You were going to be busy. Uh, I reached uh, out yeah. to everybody that I knew though. And was like, hey, this is the opportunity if you're interested. Yeah, I, I, did, uh, I did one in Denver last year, a okay. uh, different panel. But I was able to, I, they're like, yeah, you can do it. And I was like, so I had to, I had to find, I got, I got three people for that panel that were Denver locals, uh, but that one worked out pretty well. And I'm, I'm hoping to get one here in September for ours. Okay. So, uh, that is what is, but, uh, so are you, uh, well, you know what, now I'm just going to pretend that I've already introed all this and uh, ask <laughs> you, uh, Jeffrey, so you're a film critic in the Atlanta area. Are you Atlanta proper? Uh, I'm just outside of it. So I'm in that area to where everyone says they live in Atlanta. But oh, te- right. Technically I'm 20 miles um, outside of Atlanta. Um, Atlanta. I feel, I, I say Salt Lake. I'm 30 miles North. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Atlanta film critics uh, circle. I'm a member for them. And then I write for two uh, platforms. Uh, also a poet, uh, English teacher, all that. Oh, you're an English teacher. What, uh, yeah. what, what, what level high school? I'm teaching everything, man. I've taught college and I've taught high school. Uh, right now I teach at a private school. So I'm literally teaching sixth graders all the way up to, I think I just got a senior yesterday. Yeah. So I I literally teach it all. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I got my master's in English lit. Okay. But I'm like, I'm like, I'm the least, probably the least well-read master's degree holder that you'll ever meet. Actually. I Uh, I would never judge anybody over that. (laughs) I I did a lot of reading, but a lot of, a lot of my classwork was uh, creatively interpret the subject of the class. So there was a lot of creativity in in my writing and they weren't, they weren't these boring old papers that you normally wind up writing for your, uh, for your master's work, yeah. which was nice. And I didn't have to do a, I didn't have to do a thesis, which was even better. Okay. I just my, did extra, my master's I did is in creative work. writing. Oh, uh, it's, that's yeah, so, nice. so, bet, so I'm kind of in the same vein. I, I know what you mean. I'll bet you're actually published then. I have published a few things. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, see, now I can say that I can say I have published a few things too. A couple yeah. of shorts in, in, in the anthologies and I self-published mm-hmm. a novel, but okay. that's, that's where it ends. Yeah, yeah. I wish I was published. That would be mm-hmm. awesome. Uh, but sadly, no, that is not the case. Um, but A, when I, so, so B, thank you. Or A, thank you for telling me uh, who you are and, and, yes. and, and everyone. Uh, welcome to the Visually Stunning Movie Podcast. Mm-hmm. Glad to be here. Uh, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, how long have you been a critic, by the way? Uh, I've been a critic since 2016. I didn't actually get into the uh, critics film critic circle until maybe last year. Uh, it took me a really long time to get in there. Yeah, you are my brother from another mother because I started this podcast in 2016. There you go. <laughs> and last year, middle of the year, they let me in the Utah Film Critics Association. Yeah. So right, I'm right there with you, English uh, man. It's just creepy. It's <laughs> creepy how many parallels there are there. Yeah. Um, speaking of parallels, then mm-hmm. let's talk about a movie that comes out tonight. If yeah. you're one of those people, or tomorrow, if you're you know actual release date people. Right. Um, this is going to be fun because I have no idea where you stand on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. This will all. be interesting. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I don't know what what your biases are. What you mm-hmm. think of anything else that Marvel has done. Yeah. So let's talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Mm-hmm. Um, the third Ant-Man film. Can we let's let's see if I can find some common ground first before we see yeah. how far we diverge. Can we agree that it's still an Ant-Man movie? 
It is an Ant Man movie. They have they have the family atmosphere in there. Yeah. Okay. So, Paul, so get, Paul Rudd does make an appearance. Okay. He <laughs> yeah, does make that. an appearance. <laughs> um, okay, fair enough. So so we agree it's an Ant Man movie. It is definitely. So let's, yeah. let's let's lay the groundwork a little bit. This is not the first film in Phase Five mm-hmm. uh, of of the MCU, but it is probably the it's the most well known property in Phase Five. Yes. 100%. Um, so far, I mean, we had Phase Four, we had Eternals, we had all the other stuff that came out. Mm-hmm. You know, we just had uh, Black Panther Two, Wakanda yep. Forever. Um, but this is, this is like this is Phase Five. They can't waffle anymore. We are now this film firmly it's, it's, it's entrenches us now. in yep. Phase Five. So mm-hmm. let me let me ask you, how did you feel up through Endgame? Everyone's through, everyone's one way or the yeah. other up through the end of phase three. So let's just your general impressions. How mm-hmm. were you at the end of Endgame? I felt good about it. Uh, it's constantly on the upward trajectory. Um, I myself was amazed, just like everybody else. Uh, we're sitting in the theater watching Infinity War, and everyone knows how it's going to end, but you still don't know how they're going to get there. Right. Um, but when we lost our boy uh, Bucky, I still <sighs> felt I still felt it in my heart. That hurt. Um, so I was feeling good uh, by the time they got to the end. That, yeah, there you go. Okay, so then we get to phase <laughs> four, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, not only post Endgame, but it's where we start introducing the TV shows. Mm-hmm. Um, overall, how did you feel about phase four, cinematically, yeah, and or serially? I I'm just gonna assume that I'm biased. Uh, I was like everybody else, so I was stuck at home uh, during the TV series. I got in way way too deep with one. <laughs> Um, I was that person that was on the uh, that was on the interwebs uh, doing way too much sleuthing, um, expecting the engineer to be Reed Richards. Um, I would admit that I was that person uh, making those posts and those tweets. Um, I enjoyed most of the series. Uh, I think I was just giving them all a chance, though. Uh, they took some risk. Um, I'm probably most critical of what's it called a uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. Uh, to be honest with you, there's something about that one that. Uh, wasn't really feeling, but every other one is like, yeah, it's not. Was it? No, that, that, that's that's fair. What was it? Was it thematically Falcon and Winter Soldier? Was it? Yeah, for was it? Story, was it? Was it? Were there story holes? Was it what? Uh, for generally me, Fal- speaking, where was it? Where yeah, was Fal- the lack? Falcon and Winter Soldier for me is thematically. Um, I feel like uh, Black Panther is one hundred percent owning its blackness. Um, Falcon and Winter Soldier, I feel like Marvel is trying to da- uh, dabble into it from a slightly more political standpoint, and a lot of it just didn't land for me. Um, I agree with everyone that thinks that it should have just had more space so they could delve into Bradley's story a little bit. Um, I would have loved it if it had been nine episodes. Yeah, like which which they six. wanted, I, yeah. but we don't know. We don't know how much more of uh, Isaiah Bradley we would have gotten. Yes. Uh, in if we'd have gotten the extra episode or episode and a half, mm-hmm. um, it did. It, my biggest gripe is, I mean, you can argue whether it it was more overtly, weirdly more. It was more contemporaneously political than say yes. Black Panther was, but Black mm-hmm. Panther was really a political movie. Yes, I mean, so it's like you can't say politics did play. It's but it, mm-hmm. it's more contemporaneous in in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. So yeah, I I. I I, I kind of agree it, with that. It felt that fumbled distinction. for some reason. Um, and, and it was, it was really hard for me to get invested with. because, and, and you could do a whole episode on this. It's, it's mm-hmm. because, because they didn't commit one way or the other. Yeah. And I think, I think a, an overarching theme of everything post end game is that Disney has failed to commit mm-hmm. to anything and j- not politics, not right. None. They just, they fail to commit. Yes. To, to, so, so that's where, we, so yeah, um, I actually, I'm, I enjoyed actually Falcon and Winter Soldier was probably my second favorite series. Okay. Um, I, I really, um, I like WandaVision because, because it's so weird and so wacky mm-hmm. intentionally, mm-hmm. they built it that way. And so I was like, any problems that you have? It's like, no, no, they, you can look at it and go, well, they literally did build it that way. Yeah. Does it keep you up at night, end, though? Toward, say what? Does it keep you up at night knowing the order that they were supposed to come out in? Uh, you know what? Here, yeah. This this applies to the films too. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, WandaVision kind of flumbled there toward the end. They lost mm-hmm. an episode, I think. 
Yeah. Um, and the whole uh, Agatha, I think, was a little clunky toward the end. I like mm-hmm. Agatha. You know, I look, Catherine Hahn is great. Yep. So, but that's it. But then I like Falcon Winter Soldier. And I was one of the probably one of the few people, or I feel like I'm one of the few people that actually I'm I was a hundred percent okay with one line, with the exception of one line, mm-hmm. uh, with Ms. Marvel, because mm-hmm. I didn't have a dog in that hunt. I didn't read it. I didn't know it. I mean, I broad strokes. I understood who yep. Kamala Khan was. But so I just went in and I was like, oh, you know what this is? This is that six months of Spider-Man's life before Tony Stark picks him up. 100%. That's what that is. And it's like, and you watch it like that and you're like, it's all right. And then you get to the end. That teen story. Right. So, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like, Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, after the first episode and I kind of hit upon that realization and I was like, oh, if you watch it like that, it just totally makes sense. And until they get to the end, you're a mutant. And I was just like... (laughs) And just so you know, there's yeah. no filters here. So I was just like, fuck you. Yeah. She's an inhuman, but they're, they're literally trying to erase inhuman now from the Marvel mm-hmm. vocabulary. And I get it. Yeah. Uh, Cause I actually paid to go see the movie in IMAX because I wanted to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That was fumbled bad, but that you don't erase it or the, you don't erase the idea just for that. There's better ways to bring mutants into the, but anyway, so yeah, so I liked, I liked Ms. Marvel. Uh, I, I, I I hope we get a season two. I hope she's good in the Marvels, yeah. which comes out this summer. I love um, her story. Um, I think yeah, she had said it, that she was a just a drama student at her school, and she was interested in getting into it. And people were like, "Hey, you need to go audition for this." And she went. Yeah, for I, I guess she tweeted like five years before yeah. the the thing when the, I, I was just like, "That's great. That's just awesome. Mm-hmm. That's like Luna Lovegood weird." Yeah, you I love I, I mean? love the story. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah, but you know, and they they touch on the partition, and I mean, so the history is great. The effects are cool. Like I said, I was cool with it. Like I said, but I I I didn't have a dog in that hunt, yeah. so I was literally watching it in a vacuum. I was just like trying to appreciate the show for the show, mm-hmm. and I was like, that's all right. And until you get to mutant, and I'm just like, damn it! Didn't they throw the uh? Did they throw the theme song in on that one too? I know some people heard that. Was there? The, a- uh, you know, the oh, the music? oh, they yeah, may the have that. I don't dig uh, that. Version. I don't dig that deep. I, yeah. I, there's those people that are like, oh, I think I heard, I think I heard three, three notes. Yeah. Of the, it's like, whatever, man, you're, you're, you're digging. There's three notes. Three, it's like punk. It's three chords. Uh-huh. <laughs> Put together. In a chord. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. then, okay. So then we have the phase four movies. How do you feel about the phase four films? I'm, I'm literally hot and cold on them. Uh, I know it's not the time and we don't have time in the show to go right. over our ranks, but I don't think anything in phase four is in my top 10. I, I don't, I think there was a lot of, I think the one that had the most potential, mm-hmm. well, it's not really fair to say that because the one that had the most potential was Wakanda forever. Yeah. But Marvel damned themselves by deciding not to push the movie back. They were in, they, they, they were, they were screwed no matter what they did with that. Yeah. Um, because if they recast them, half the audience goes, why do you, why did you recast T'Challa? And if they don't, you get the, the output that we got, which is just clunkily put together. Yeah. Um, and the other half of the audience goes, why did you, why did you do that? So as, they, they, as smooth as I think they could have made the film with the choice that they made. Yeah, and it, uh, but they, that's... yeah, but, but they were, it just, they rushed it mm-hmm. and that, so, so I think a, they made the wrong decision by killing T'Challa, mm-hmm. but then they rushed out that effort. And I really, I, that just compounded that mistake. Yeah. Um, but I, the, the film that I think had the most potential is actually probably Shang-Chi, mm-hmm. Um, which I like way more than I like the internal. It's it's the only one I've watched multiple times. Like I'll put Shang Chi on in the background. Oh while wow! I'm, while I'm doing laundry, I appreciate that film, especially you know how Marvel's a little weird about their solo efforts. Yeah, um, Shang Chi was, was good. Yeah, it was it was good. It was it was seven. It, it's weird. It, there's uh, there, we have an expression uh, that we've used more than once. It, we we used it when we talked about the the Star Wars <laughs> sequel trilogy. Every single one of those movies. Mm-hmm. We're like, it was a disappointing seven because seven's mm-hmm. a pretty good movie. Yeah. But we're like, ah, it's a disappointing seven. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, yeah, but, um, but yeah, Eternals was just not good. Shang-Chi. I, I, I think the visuals were great. I, um, as an Iron Man fan, mm-hmm. knowing they were going to go into the 10 rings, I think they made a, it, it, it was a pretty wholesale change. 
mm-hmm. for how they did the Mandarin slash Ten Rings. Um, I wondered if we were going to make it to Iron Man three, but it worked. <laughs> but it, yeah. but but that but that change in Shang Chi it worked and it worked in that mm-hmm. mythology. So I was like, okay, if you can make it work, that I'm all for that. So you know, even though I'm an Iron Man guy, but my actually biggest my biggest problem with Shang Chi and ironically probably with most of phase four mm-hmm. is the over reliance on comedy and most of it's stupid comedy um reminded me to bring this back up when we get we will and then, and then of course you get to 3, thor yeah. love and thunder in phase four i wanted to love it i knew i couldn't and I that's really that's to. what real okay here's the thing i love thor yeah uh i love what brandon was trying to do i mm-hmm. love that he wanted to make this big godly epic shakespearean mm-hmm. monstrosity and i loved it yeah. and then the dark world of course historically terrible mm-hmm. and then ragnarok it's like well you know what watiti did pump some life back into it mm-hmm. and every but everything that really pushed my limits in ragnarok is all of love and thunder i and wanted to like, love i wanted to love ragnarok yeah. i'm one of the few people in my friends group that doesn't I, really I, I, I just appreciate I, it for what it is it's just far enough it goes it doesn't go too far too yeah. often for too long but in love and thunder it's just all, all the across way. the line it's all the yes. way there so that brings us to phase five yes when we get our third ant-man movie who'd have thought we'd gotten two one much mm-hmm. less three much less th- the keystone mm-hmm. sorry the cornerstone if you will, yep. of, everything. of phase five mm-hmm. um now, Kevin Feige swears that this is the film. This is the film that is the most <laughs> important one since Endgame, which he said about every film yeah. since Endgame. Uh, Quantum Mania. First off, first impressions, love it, hate it, ambivalent. If those are my options. Those I'm, are your options. If those Where are my you options, I'm, I'm in the middle. If the, you're in if the those ambivalent are my area. Yeah. You're, in the, you're in the four to six yeah. area. That that's fair. I I am I'm literally right there with. I'm probably at the high end of ambivalent, but I uh-huh. love Ant Man. Yeah. So again, I probably skew slightly more favorable. A lot of there's times. a lot of I, I know we'll get there, but there's a lot of things I think the movie does well. And then uh, some other things uh, left me with a question mark. I ironically, my, my least favorite part mm-hmm. of of Quantum Mania is the fact that the entire thing takes place in the quantum realm. Whole movie because it's all <laughs> it's all CGI. Yes. The, The great thing about the first two Ant-Man was it was literally in your living room Mm -hmm. on the sidewalk. Yes. And now it's in this big. Regardless regardless of scale. Yeah. Regardless of scale. That's where it was. And now it's just in this big. And you can say this about. You can say this about the other comic book films. Yeah. um, A big CGI muddled mess. I almost looked at my watch. I couldn't believe how fast they got there. Well, it's only the only movie was only two hours and five minutes. Yeah, and um, remember, like fifteen minutes of that is CGI company credits. Yeah, I don't even want to. I don't want to recount the entire thing. But we're at dinner. We've been to Baskin Robbins. Yep. Next thing you know, we're there, and I'm like, what? What? What happened? Because well, because his child is apparently a genius. Yes, she became a genius in the five years he was blipped. <laughs> she had plenty of time. Um, and and then of course Hank Pym gives her crash courses and personal tutoring. Mm-hmm. And they wind up there. Okay, so this 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 movie is not doing well with critics, if you believe Rotten Tomatoes, which I have to because those are the Rotten Tomatoes picks their critics. Yeah, I was going to say those are our people. Those are, I'm not a Rotten Tomato critic. Uh-huh. Uh, my audience is not big enough. Mm-hmm. But 49%, I believe, a couple hours ago is yep. what it was sitting at. Mm-hmm. That is ridiculous. For a pre-release critics score, Mm -hmm. even Eternals was higher than that. Yep. If Um, anything, I think the critics, um, once again, are are kin. I think they're becoming more and more critical of MCU movies and their standard is going up for them as well. Yeah. I, Marvel has brought that on itself, um, with the quality of phases one through three. Mm -hmm. Well, for the most part, phases one through three, but (laughs) But uh, no, so yeah, so my problem is that they they took the best aspect of the Ant Man story and threw it out the window and turned it into generic Marvel science fiction movie. Yep, 
They gave um, you a small taste of it with their uh, the the dinner scene that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, you get the smallest taste of it, and then it never makes it back there. I don't know if every character is on screen together after that. Until, no, not yeah, till the end. Until everyone gets rescued. Well, yeah, yeah, no, not yeah, not not till the they end. Once they go down, the they're, separated. they're separated. <laughs> they're separated. They're separated. They're yeah. separated. Yeah, right until the very end in the climactic yeah. battle with Kang. Uh, yeah. Oops, spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> whatever. If you don't know Kang's in it, you have not been paying attention. I tried not to watch any of the trailers. I saw that uh, post earlier. I, re I respect that. I well, it, I'm a teaser the, trailer only, and I always give in and watch I, the second one. And well, here, back. well, I, I didn't start that until uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, until like uh, No Way Home, mm -hmm. because you you hear enough, yeah, about what's going to happen beforehand. So you're like, oh. then the trailers, and I'm like, no, I don't want to watch it. I don't want to watch it. I would be at the theater waiting for a critics screening, yeah, and of course they've got trailers running on loop. So as soon as I would see or I would hear the Marvel theme. I'd like just walk away, cover my ears and come back in four minutes. And so I, I had steadfastly succeeded in not seeing a no way home trailer until a week before the film. And I took my wife to see a completely separate movie and I was trapped good, in the theater and they showed it and I was like, God <laughs> damn it. But uh, no, I, I try to do, I, I try to do it because I didn't see any. Right. So yep. the, 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 the problem, I, the, yeah, the thing with the trailers is that it's, it, they, they're no longer, really informative mm -hmm. they're if anything misleading mm -hmm. and and i don't want to be misled going into a film that i'm going to have to talk about mm -hmm. so it's, it's like no if i can avoid it i will I, I, you know i try not to write you know because uh, there are market like the la new york markets they see it before before we do here in salt yep. lake uh so those early things come out and i try to avoid those but you'll see the headline and you're like damn it uh, so you, so I, I limit it to that, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard. Um, but I'm, I'm probably, yeah, critics should be hard on, on Marvel films at, at this point. I think, um, I think early on Marvel, uh, they earned the right to get some goodwill from the critics. Mm -hmm. They put out enough, maybe surprisingly good stuff. Mm hmm to get them over the dark worlds and things, you know, those kind of little hiccups so that by the time you get to end game, you know, you're evaluating all of that stuff at one yeah. point. Everyone's the world is watching now. The world is um, watching and, and they, they pull. So, so now again, we, you know, we said Mar you know, Marvel and Disney have done this to themselves. Now you've set that standard. Um, and if you don't live up to it, they're going to be harsher on it. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not judging end game. You know, they're not, or, the, you know, they're not judging Ant-Man against this end game thing. They're judging it against this, mm -hmm. you know, a little higher up. So now if it doesn't reach it, it's actually low. You know, I mean, it's like this inverse proportional relationship. So if, it, if it's not as good, it's even worse than it might be if you just kind of evaluated it as this thing. Um, but yeah, it's this, this movie, it's just, and then it's all over the place. I mean, in Endgame, yeah, none of the characters are together because they're all scattered across time. And it, so it's it's kind of the same here. Yeah. They're scattered throughout the 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 quantum realm. And it's weird, but they all did manage to make it in at the same time, even though they they came in. Very convenient. Very yeah, right. <laughs> so I mean, even Ragnarok, uh, you know, when uh, Thor and Loki fell out, out of uh, the Bifrost at the literally five seconds apart, they wound up on on Sakar a month and a half apart or however long Loki was there first. So yeah, the timing is convenient uh, in quantum mania. Let's talk about the cast though, before we get to Jonathan majors, I think um, the cast is one of the strong points. The cat for the, the most film. part, I would agree. Um, if you just, if you look at them on paper again, Paul Rudd's back as, yeah. as Ant-Man, the Evangeline Lily's back as Wasp. We get Hank Pym. We get, you know, we get Janice, so, you know, we got Michael mm -hmm. Douglas. We got uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. They recast Cassie. As an older child, Catherine I'm still, Newton. I'm still 50-50 on Catherine that Newton, one. I loved in Freaky. Uh, oh, I didn't know she was in that. Yeah, she was in that. Okay. Um, and, and, well, that movie, that movie, she's good in it, mm -hmm. but it's good because she's playing Vince Vaughn playing a teenage girl. Mm -hmm. And Vince Vaughn is playing Vince Vaughn playing a teenage girl. So it's that's, that's the dynamic that you have yeah. to watch in Freaky, but it's really, so she's really good. And then this one, I'm like, I don't know. Then we get, I mean, Jonathan Majors is back. You know, if you watched the Loki series, can't say enough about it. Yeah. Um, 
which we're getting season two of soon. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's back as Kang. Now now he is Kang. He is not he who remains. And officially the Conqueror. He is Kang the Conqueror. <laughs> uh, we get... You get some side characters. We get some. Okay, let me let me ask you this: Bill Murray is in this movie. That is not a spoiler. We've now everyone should know Bill Murray is in this movie. Mm -hmm. Did Bill Murray need to be in this movie? I'm assuming that he was interested, or they just really wanted him, and they threw him in there. Um, I didn't didn't hate his character, but it could have been anybody else. Uh, Well, and I do I do love the fact that he hasn't been eliminated. mm -hmm. Uh, So. You know, you get your, uh, you get your collector kind of thing where, you know, he pops up, he has more of a cameo in this than the collector did in his first appearance. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. So we get, uh, in the quantum realm, everyone's fighting against Kang. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of, a lot of cribbing going on in this, in this movie, they crib from a lot of movies. Mm-hmm. A lot of other material in this. Uh, did, was I the only one that caught the the Indiana Jones line? Where was that at? That was when we were having the awkward parental discussion about I had needs. Oh, yes, and yes, uh, yes. <laughs> what uh, it, her name was Linda. And we went out a couple times. Well, what happened? She wasn't you, sweetheart. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I seem to recall that in Raiders of the Lost Star. Um, I wonder if we're just at that point to where, where we've seen all the movies. Yeah, to where the Marvel movies they're not even referring to themselves. They're yeah. referring to like the larger zeitgeist or whatever. Yeah. So it, it was weird, I, it, but it jumped out at me. I didn't even have to think about it. And yeah. that's, that was weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other thing that I really wanted to say, and, and the, so, so everyone Kang wants out of the quantum realm. That's, that's the plot of the movie. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, you can figure that part out because Kang wants to conquer. Which is interesting. You say that that has nothing to do with Ant-Man. Which has nothing to do with <laughs> Ant-Man, except that he happens to wind up there yes, because his daughter happens to do something mm-hmm. and Janet's involved. Yes. <laughs> Damn it. Janet there. Mm-hmm. That's my zeitgeist reference for the day. Uh, but mm-hmm. no, so they're there. And that whole subplot is Tron legacy. And you, I was like, I'm going to be, you have a checklist. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to be the only one that, mm-hmm. that, that uses the words Tron legacy when we talk about quantum mania. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, it's just like, um, there's, but again, there's, there's some cool stuff there. there yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool to see the quantum realm. I don't know that we needed to see it for two hours. Um, they leaned because, into it really, really hard. Well, like the first 20 minutes they're there, it was like, uh, I, I, I felt like I was watching the production team's pitch slideshow. Mm-hmm. This is everything design. we can do. This is everything we can do. And <laughs> Feige went, uh, <laughs> just, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's all there. Um, the, what was it? The, was it slug horses? The slug headed was, it, were they horses or horse looking things? They were it was something. a weird combination. It was like, yeah, yeah, it was like a big slug headed horse. Um, there's some there was another one that design. was stingray shaped. The one yeah, that flying around through the yeah. area. Yeah. That's not, that's not avatar at all. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Right. They're all, but again, the that benefit, is the, now that you bring it up, at least they're pulling from their own, uh, right. treasure well, trove. <laughs> Dis- well, Disney owns Indiana Jones too. Yeah. And they, and they own Tron. It's like, they're, yeah, they're, they're stealing from, from their, their own, own material stuff, yeah. at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. It's like I said, there's so much good. There are good bits in it. Mm-hmm. There's some cool design in it. Mm-hmm. And then they kind of have speckle this story on top of it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's just the, like, it's not as pretty as Avatar 2, but it's Nor doing close. the same thing, which is look at all of this cool shit and mm-hmm. here's some characters for you to pay attention to. Yep. Uh, and it's just weird. You know, it really it, is. The more you're saying about it, I'm rem- remembering and realizing it really is Kang's movie. It is. Okay. So let's, let's These talk, characters let's, just let's talk about uh, uh, Kang Quantumania then. Let's talk about Kang Quantumania. That's the name of this movie now. Uh, Jonathan Majors. Played again, played he who remains in the Loki series. Now mm-hmm. he's carrying the conqueror. Um, he's so intense. He, he just, he's, he's got, he has, he has, people are going to slaughter me for so many reasons when I make this comparison. He has the exact same appeal as 
not appeal. That's not the word I want. Presence as um, Idris Elba does, mm -hmm. where he when he comes on screen, you're immediately paying attention to him, no matter what he's doing. Um, and he never has to get up. He doesn't and have to raise still his understand voice. How, you, you, yeah. And you still understand how intense he is. There are mm -hmm. actors like that. Idris Elba is one. Um, uh, young Clint Eastwood was the same way. Mm -hmm. Young Clint Eastwood, not like sixty-year-old young Clint, you know, but like thirty-year young yeah. Clint Eastwood. You know that, but you know uh, Burt Lancaster in mm -hmm. his early, early years could come on screen, and you would immediately you're like something, something. Yeah. Everyone's using happen. a different word for it. Um, some people are, are telling us that he's Shakespearean. Some people are saying that he brings a gravitas to it. So everyone's trying to come up with their phrase that's going to attach. And, to and they're all good what words. Type of man he is. Yeah, it, it's but it, it's just a presence. It's yeah. it, you know it's you you know if it, it when it you know if you're talking about an actress, she has the it factor. Mm -hmm. You know we've had we've had several of those roll along. I mean, we have we have a new it girl every two or three years. The one that comes along that's going to be the next big thing. Mm -hmm. um, and even though they replace them every couple of years, you look at back at the previous years, you're like, no, no, I'll still watch her. I'll yeah. still watch her. I'll still watch her. I'll still, you're, you know, you're not replacing them. You're adding to the list. And I'll steal from an interview. Um, but uh, Major said that he studied Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight. And another one I in that role. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Another one in that role. In that role, Ledger does the exact same thing. When, I mean, um, it's, it's weird because I actually, I would tell my kid this when they were younger. Um, if, you know, if you're at work and someone's getting up, you know, depending on what you're doing or there's a coworker or a boss, I said, and you, I said, the best thing you can do to win any confrontation like that, stay calm mm -hmm. because that will drive <laughs> people though. A, Insane. they're pissed that you're not rising up, mm -hmm. but, but once they get past that, they're like, what do they know that I don't? Mm hmm or what, it, what, what's going on. And it, it, that's a huge thing, uh, to, to use for people. Um, but yeah, so, you know, majors uses it here. Ledger used it to great effect in the dark night Ed Elba does it. Like I said, young Burt Lancaster could do it. Young Clint Eastwood could do it there. You know, uh, uh, uh well, pretty much still Denzel Washington could also do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was going to say young, but then I remembered Macbeth. I'm like, no, yeah, it's still Denzel, <laughs> um, so, so, uh, which is great, by the way. If you haven't seen that movie, The Tragedy of Macbeth, oh, my God, that movie is so good. Um, but, yeah, there's those actors and majors. He's he's got it. He had it even when he was like that jovial he who remains in Loki. Mm -hmm. He was never really up. Yeah, he would smile, but it was never he was. I mean, it was it was weird. He could be happy and calm at the same time. And that mm -hmm. kind of made it worse. And this one, it's just like Kang is like, no, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to have to kill you. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that's just. And I believed him. And yes. And you believe, <laughs> haven't I killed you before? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's disturbing. Kill me. But wait, what? Uh, <laughs> but yeah. So, yeah. So that's. So, yeah. Every time Kang is on the screen. I think it's his movie, man. It, um, it is. It, it really is. And that's that is the other problem with this. The, the first two Ant-Man movies were Ant-Man movies. They were about Scott point A to point B problem solving. Mm -hmm. And they use that bare bones framework here, but really this is Kang problem solving. Yes. Um, and then we get to the end and we see how all that is going to shake out. But um, it is, this is Kang's movie. There's no, there's no denying that it, it, it just is. People are going to have to live with that. Now, the big question is this, the most important film since Endgame in terms of, of the, the MCU moving forward. Mm -hmm. And does it do what it needs to do in terms of that? Because again, you know, we talked about phase four and my biggest, the biggest complaint about phase four, everyone has like, we don't, nothing is, we don't have a direction. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, you know, what are we doing? Does this film do what it needs to do to correct that? If you agree with that assessment of phase four, do you think it depends on where we, where we're standing? Because no way home is that movie for me that had stupid high expectations. Once again, I'm way too deep into mm -hmm. Twitter, reading all of the rumors. Right. And for the most part, that film delivered it. Okay. Inside the film and outside it showed it, what it, Kevin is willing to do. It, well, it for a did, little bit but, of fan it, service, et cetera. He, but, it, and, but here is the thing that was still a Sony movie. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Crazy. Foggy had input, <laughs> but he didn't have control. Mm -hmm. So in the end, that is still a Sony movie. Now, Sony has dropped the ball with Venom and Venom 2, you know, uh, Morbius, uh, and Morbius. Mm -hmm. uh, which I and, don't hate. I'm not going to well, mention it again on the show. No, but I don't. Well, I don't hate Morbius. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I no, actually, it's still not the worst thing I've seen. <laughs> the first 45 minutes of Morbius is a perfectly serviceable, yes, um, science run amok movie, mm -hmm. and then it goes off the rails. I said the exact same thing about uh, Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. um, for the first the first 45 minutes of that abomination is a perfectly serviceable generic science fiction movie. Mm -hmm. And it ends as a complete pile of dog shit, fantastic four movie. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> but, but the first 45 minutes, perfectly serviceable, generic science fiction, Morbius first 45 minutes, perfectly serviceable medical wackadoodle. Mm -hmm. And then it goes off the rails. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it just, it, it's like first 45. So it's Sony's not perfect. Um, so yeah, no way home really does kind of establish that the multiverse and then we get dr strange uh in the multiverse of madness which i am skewed to like because i am a sam raimi fan mm -hmm. i'm an full evil commitment fan. to his style and his vision it it well full commitment to his style mm -hmm. i don't think i think he was about 80 <laughs> percent, yeah. and i think that was kevin Okay. I think Kevin kept that 20. If, if we'd have actually Kevin is always gotten, over his shoulder. Yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> I, so I, I think if we'd have gotten 95% Sam Raimi in multiverse of madness. Oh yeah. I, I'm down at the I'm, end of that movie. I said, give Sam whatever character movie. he wants next. Whatever. Him, I know. Right. Yeah. You know, he, he could probably do a Morbius movie, mm -hmm. an actual Morbius movie. Yeah. So, but yeah, so hopefully they give him another, well, he he's earned another shot. 100%. Uh, uh, but again, I argue that Ron Howard deserves an actual Star Wars movie that he gets to develop from the ground up mm -hmm. because Solo is only as good as it is because he came in and fixed it. Yes. And it's not a great movie. It's, it's serviceable. But mm -hmm. I want to see what Ron Howard can do with an actual <laughs> Star Wars movie. I like that. But yeah, I'm no, sorry. Using Raimi, that. So yeah. So Sam Raimi <laughs> needs another movie. So, mm -hmm. you know, but again, no, no way home. It's weird. So people are like, well, what's the best Marvel movie? And I'm like, well, I, I never include Iron Man in that and they're like well why and i'm like well because you can't you're a purist well, no it's an outlier <laughs> yeah it's 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 an outlier nothing else happens without iron man if iron man crashes and burns hmm. nothing else happens so you might have to it, shut down you can't really count i mean is star wars the best star wars movie no empire is mm -hmm. but if star wars crashes and burns nothing else happens. So you can't really, you know what I mean? It's so without point, Iron yeah. Man, it's, so I, I always take Iron Man out when people ask me what, you know, so, so the best Marvel movie is the winter soldier. Yes. 100%. Um, so, but, but I, would, I knew but, we were going to make it here. I knew but, <laughs> that would come up. I knew Thor two would come up and that's, that, that's actually no longer the worst. I think love and thunder is actually the worst, but again, it's terrible that Thor it has at least two of the worst. Yes. Three. <laughs> Uh, Marvel movies, but no. So they say I, I always take Iron Man out, but the, I will accept the argument that Iron Man is in fact the best Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. I will allow that argument. I just won't make it. Yes, because I can't. I was like, no, I have to divorce myself from that because I, I'm I'm a two Marvel guy. At the end of my comic book career, I had two books left. I had Iron Man and I had Fantastic Four. One of those has paid off, and one of those I am still waiting to pay off. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> hopefully, when we get the reboot of Fantastic Four, it will finally pay off. Uh, so, but again, but I'm all, so I'm invested in Iron Man as well. So again, I divorced myself from that. No way home is the, probably the best Spider-Man movie that Sony has made. Yes. And I love Tobey Maguire, but no way home is the best parts of all those other movies. Mm -hmm. And it's got a little Marvel magic sprinkled in. It's got the luxury that Tobey Maguire's series came out before it. As yes. Well. It does. It, so it, it so yeah, it so there's, there's, there's a lot going on. So, but again, so I can't, I can't count no way home as part of the MCU. I can't because I, I don't, I, it's not legit. It's like, it's like the visiting cousin, so, you know, it's, you're, so changing it's not your favorite kid. you're changing my world right now. You've taken away two of, I think probably my top 10 movies. Two, um, like, well, you can love them of Marvel. The you can say Marvel's, you can say Marvel themed Marvel studios. Even I think they still count, but they're not, 
but yeah, I can't. Best of MCU phase? movies, yeah. I can't really count them. I, I just, I can't. Is Shang Chi the best Phase Four movie from beginning to end? The argument can be made that Shang Chi actually is the best Phase Four movie. Um, and I would have said until Love and Thunder that Eternals was the worst, and then Love and Thunder came. You out. You mentioned this earlier. Eternals does get a few things right for me. I'm not going to go so far as to say, oh, it should have been a TV series or or anything like that. But right. Eternals does have some some moments that I do enjoy. It, and, and, and it does. And, that, and I think that's what frustrated most people about Phase 4 yeah. is that you could see, oh, that could have been so good. Yeah. Yeah. People it's said that, that about so that much. About. Yeah. Every, it's, like, it's like, oh, that could have been so good. It's like, oh, that yeah. could have been so good. And it, it just, it's not, especially mm-hmm. on the TV side because so many of them became truncated Mm -hmm. due to budget or covid or whatever um they would get truncated and switched around and the release dates would move and so the tv shows i give you kind of have to give a little more leeway to um because they were planned to be longer and a lot of them were shorter Mm -hmm. but a film it's like no 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 that film this is your film this is the box that you've built and if you can't fill that box appropriately that is on you yeah um, so that, and that's the problem with love and thunder is, uh, for me, was that, but, but so quantum mania now phase five, does it do what it needs to do? You, you, I, I, I took no way home from you. You wanted no way home mm-hmm. to, to fill that void. And I'm not going to allow it. I don't want to answer do your that. question. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll start there. I don't want to answer your question. Um, I do, if we jump back to Rotten Tomatoes for a really quick second, I do believe that the fans are going to pull it back up and it's going to balance out. I have no right. idea where it's, where it's going to end up. Um, I do think the film does, un- it does enough to propel people forward. I don't think that they're going to abandon the MCU by any means. Um, no, I think that Jonathan Majors is probably going to have four movies next year and then five the year after that. I don't, I don't know what his schedule has the space for. Um, I know he's, I, I think it does, it does enough. It does. It does. Yeah. Enough. I, yeah, I don't yeah. know how deep you want to go into post credit scenes, but I think the movie, it does, it does enough to keep us moving forward. I, I, I like to try to evaluate without post credits because yeah. those are really just glorified trailers. Yes. Um, <laughs> we went, what, did, what were we watching? And the post credit scene was basically, uh, the trailer, the deep, the long trailer for Dr. Strange. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever, whatever Marvel movie came out, I don't, I don't think it was Eternal. It might have been Shang Chi. No, no, it, it was a Marvel. I'm getting movie. Them I can't out of order. What it was, but the but the yeah. post credit scene was literally Doctor Strange and Wanda in the orchard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It all came out. Like, oh, that's right. Yeah, they gave it to you that? literally as a bonus scene. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's like, can we just watch this movie again so we can watch that scene? <laughs> and we're like, that's not a good sign. Yeah, when that happens. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so this, yeah, so you can't you can't have it. It, it does enough. Quantum Mania, I think it, it does enough. It definitely does uh, pick the direction mm-hmm. of Phase Five, which is Kang, all Kang all the time. Mm-hmm. Which, God willing, will give us a good Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they with, have to land Fantastic Four. They, if if they. I'm going to say it. I'm going to be blunt about it. They if to. they fuck that up again. Yeah. It's over. Yes. I, I think not just for Fantastic Four. I think it's over. I think Marvel's done. I think they'll still put out movies, mm-hmm. but I think that shit is done. Yeah. Um, you cannot, you cannot consistently have a proper, I mean, blame Fox all you want mm-hmm. for Alba one, Alba two. And then that, 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 that abortion, uh, from 2015. You've waited so long to get the property. I know. It's you, gotta you be You literally good. cannot fuck that up. You have to put your best people on it. You have to, you, you have to avoid any semblance of anything mm-hmm. that what I call the, the YouTube hate industry yep. can latch onto beforehand. Mm-hmm. That shit needs to be pristine. You got to shroud the entire movie and nothing gets in, nothing gets out. Nope. And, and then it's, it has to deliver. You can't, you can't half-ass it. That's gotta be, that has to be what Iron Man was Mm -hmm. the first Iron Man. It literally has, you almost want, and and I know, I can't remember who they have directing it, 
or developing it, but you all, you need someone that's gonna, uh, John Favreau that, which yeah. is, I'm going to make, I'm going to make the movie I want to make because I love this character in this property. You it's not the guy that wrote infinity war and in game. Is it? I no, it's, uh, is it, name. is it, no, is it, it's not WandaVision. It's not the WandaVision guy. It might be the WandaVision guy. I hate that. I forgot. I know it's, I, yeah. and I don't want to look it up, but yeah, I agree but, with you 100%. But, though. But, it's it's got to, it's got to land. They, Feige needs to pick his guy, mm -hmm. give him the marching order. And the marching order really does just need to be, don't fuck it up. Yeah. And then literally just watch the budget. Mm -hmm. They need to stay off the sets. They need to stay out of the writer's room. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they need to just go, go make the fantastic four movie that the fandom wants. And I don't mean the, the one that is the rise of Skywalker fan service yeah. for two and a half hours that does nothing. I mean, think about how they, long we've been waiting. They need, they, you said they need to land it. They have to stick the landing like mm -hmm. Nadia Comaneci. Yes. They got, I mean, psh, psh, done. They need mm -hmm. all, they, they have to nail it or, it, or they're, they're, they're fucked. Yeah. That, I mean, literally, I mean, you can say what you, oh, it's called like, oh, Thor, eh, eh, Iron Man, eh, eh, eh. this is a fucking Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. The first similar. family, the first family of Marvel, <laughs> you Sim literally cannot fuck it up. Similar to, uh, I did, I wasn't thinking it at the time, but Spider-Man for Sony, it did need to be good and it needed no to home? build. Yeah, it needed right. to build yeah. uh, going all the way back. Um, yeah. It needed to build on, on itself. Uh, we know we don't have, f between us, we don't have yeah. the mutants that we want yet. Right. Fantastic Four has to hit. They yeah. can't mess up. <laughs> no, they can't. Yeah. Um, and, but they said the X Men when they when they finally bring those in, mm -hmm. the X Men they can build those. Yeah. You know, they're they're it's a different to drop, standard. It's a different standard. They can build it up, and it, and it's got a lot of good baggage or lo loved baggage. Yes. You know, it's got characters and actors that people appreciated. Mm -hmm. So they have to they have to be careful when they build it up. <laughs> In a, it's funny in, you say that. in a different way than they need to be careful when they're doing Fantastic Four because yeah. everyone understands what the Fantastic Four is mm -hmm. and everyone understands what that movie needs to do. Yeah. And if Marvel fails to recognize that, that's going to hurt. That's mm -hmm. going to hurt a lot. Yeah. Um, that Because, I mean, there's not another property out there. Even X-Men, they could make a crappy X-Men and they have made crappy mm -hmm. X-Men movies and people still love the X-Men. If you make one more shitty Fantastic Four movie, <laughs> nobody will trust you anymore any good ones yeah there's been no good ones i i look here's my here's my controversial fantastic four hot take since we're we're probably well past quantum mania and we're going to start wrapping it up the best fantastic four origin story committed to film 1993 roger corman that oh, is the all best, the way back that is the best <laughs> origin not movie that is the best depiction of their origin because he literally took the comic well he was producer but they took the comic book mm -hmm. And they said, this is the origin story. And they literally, they did it. Mm -hmm. Now you can tweak that a little bit, but you can't go all wackadoodle and oh, reimagine the, no, people are not, they're not going to buy it. They're not, no, they, we've had that. That's not mm -hmm. going to work again. Um, you you've got to go back. You've got to give people what they want. They, you've got to give. You've already got me nervous though. I think they believe that they're going to set it in the fifties, sixties or seventies. Oh, see, I, but I'm okay with that. They could yeah. set it in the sixties. I'm okay yeah. with that. That's, and I, I believe mean, that's, they've been, that's in awesome space. because then they, yeah. then they could dump them in the quantum realm after two films and bring mm -hmm. them back now. And then you get a captain America fish out of water, but Reed Richards is still the smartest man in the multiverse. Mm -hmm. So who cares? Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it, there are ways to do it without fucking it up. Mm -hmm. Um, and they need, they need to find one. If they stick the first <laughs> one, they can have a good second one. Yeah. But if they have a crappy first one, no They're not going to be a second one. <laughs> so, and, it, and it'll be ugly. Yeah. Um, so let's wrap this up. We've wandered, we've wandered our way through from phase one, all the way to phase five and Ant-Man and the Wasp quantum mania. We agree that it it's done enough mm -hmm. to move us forward. It, I keep telling um, people it's a good movie. It's again, I, I like Ant-Man. Yeah. So I, I tend to be, I, I'm on the upper end of ambivalent. I'm at like okay. a six. Which yep. still puts me a whole ten percent above the Rotten Tomatoes mm -hmm. critics, um, and I'll probably catch some flack for that. Yep. There are things that are just patently silly about this, and not in that good Ant Man way, mm -hmm. um, because the first two movies are just full of patently silly things. But it's okay because it's an Ant Man movie. Yeah. Uh, 
but in this one, it's the stakes are so big that you, you have to find a way they didn't, they didn't rely on too much humor, but yeah, like the, the, I had needs exchange mm -hmm. that one, literally as short as that was, that went on too long. Um, I prefer to the humor compared to Love and Thunder. Love oh my! Thunder. Well, yeah, it's 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 not Love, Love Thunder and Thunder so levels. Yeah. No, not it's not even close. Love and Thunder. Every every time they they tried to get serious. Every time Watiti approached something serious in Love mm -hmm. and Thunder, and could have done something really dark with gore, mm -hmm. he chickened out and he ran to dick jokes. Yes, and 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 that's the downside. Now in this one, there I mean, there's a lot of dark stuff. There's revolution. There's tyrants. There's death. Mm -hmm. There's displacement. There's all of this, and then there's also things that the hate industry can latch onto mm -hmm. and complain about. Um, mm -hmm. And then some of it's just not very well done. Yeah, and that's the I mean, so that's that's what I'm on. If there's stuff that's not well done, it's not well done. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's the worst part of this is that it could have been it again, like so many things lately. It could have been better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, but I, I think it's, I think it's good enough. Michelle Pfeiffer. Um, she's good, but again, a part, some of her writing is a little yeah, wonky. Um, but again, Hank Pym, of course he's great, but yeah. some of his wonking is a little right. Cass again, the weak spot for me is Cassie, Catherine Newton. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, that character is just, it's a little, she's a little too iron heart, a little too smart, too young, too fast. Mm -hmm. Um, and too important for no discernible reason. Yep. Uh, they put so, her on the same level. Right. As Ant-Man and the Wasp. Right. Out of nowhere. And, and yeah. intelligently, I mean, she's theory. I mean, she's, she's as smart because Scott's not stupid. Scott is actually very smart, mm -hmm. um, but he's, he's, he's wacky, but he's not a scientist. He's an electrical yeah. engineer. So she's as smart as him, but she has interests that more align with the Hank Pym's and the Janet Van Dyne's. Mm -hmm. So, but again, she's just bumped right up there. And it's like mm -hmm. without, it just doesn't, it's, it's very jarring and, and doesn't really work, but they could have done this story without that. Yes. The, the, everything else could really remain the same. She could have been, you know, interested in ants and been studying the ants and that, mm -hmm. you know, that technology and still had a suit and that, you know, you sure they could have flipped, work. they could have flipped her and Hank very, very a easily. little bit and, yeah. and done that. So, it, you know, it, that would have been it. Yeah. She could have been the one with the little intelligent ant colony yeah so you know that that would have maybe made a little more sense mm -hmm. um so but yeah that's that's the that that was the disappointing part for me is like i wanted to like her more and i just i couldn't um uh modok fan that i don't want to hurt you, know, you. <laughs> okay so in the I, eyes I could of have gone either eyes, ways in yeah. the eyes of skywalker there's a line that sums up my thoughts about modok okay they fly now mm -hmm. and it's the exact same feel. It's like, Oh, they fly now. Yeah. Why? Well, we can sell that toy. Mm -hmm. And that's really Modoc. Modoc is, he's a toy that they're going to try to sell. Yeah. And it's probably not because who wants Darren Cross's big head? Nobody wants arms them. And legs. <laughs> uh, no one's going to buy that toy, but it's like it, literally Modoc could have been anyone else. Yeah. But they're like, Oh, we can bring, we can bring uh, Corey Stoll back mm -hmm. and, and put him in the movie, which whatever. Again, it's just one of those moments where you're like, eh, it's like Bill Murray's got a cameo. That doesn't really mean anything. Mm -hmm. it's a, now that I think about it, Bill Murray only has that one. He has that one scene. Scene at the table. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At the bar. Yep. That's it. Yeah. And it's like, that eh, doesn't really mean anything. It literally doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, again, but that's that's the uh, that's the Michael Sheen role in Tron Legacy. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, you are onto something, though. I, I, there's a lot you, of Tron legacy in this movie. <laughs> you have you know, me wondering what's going on in the quantum realm right now right with now. the freedom fighters and Bill Murray. Exactly. There, now there's an empty gap and someone there has is a to gap. fill it. Well, the, the freedom fighters are theoretically taking over. Kang is. And Bill Murray yeah. TBD. Yeah. So it's like, but again, it's, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cribs in this, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of cribs in this, but right. uh, like I said, I, you're right. It does. It does enough. Mm -hmm. uh you're you're you sound like you're right right mid-range that five out of ten i was going to use a bad baseball reference with you Go earlier for it. and just say that we got on base we did it's a it's a it's a <laughs> it's a see it's a seeing eye single i believe yeah. is the expression it found its way through the infield and caught some grass yeah so we're feeling good we got our high five that's from right the, from the so, base yeah, coach, so next next batter up <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, how, that's move, how I feel. Let's move some people around a bit. I like it. Let's let's go with that. Uh, yeah, my Phillies <laughs> lost the World Series this year, but uh, I'll I'll take the baseball analogy. It's okay. Got you. <laughs> um, well, 
uh, uh thank you jeffrey uh, for coming on the show uh, and talking me. about all things Marvel, apparently, instead of just Quantumania, which is always fun because there's so much to talk about and so much cross-referencing we can do. Um, again, you're Atlanta-based. Yes, sir. Uh, are you going to be at uh, Atlanta? You're not going to be at, at ATL not. Comic Convention. This is really random, but I will be in Orlando because I teach an indoor drumline. And we're, nice. going, to, we're going to Orlando to compete. No, uh, nice. so, so drumline is so cool. We yep. do not out west. That's not our thing. Mm-hmm. That and that that's a southern thing, but it is so cool. If you go farther, if you get all the way to California, yeah, that's then, true. Then, then a couple pop up. Yeah, yeah, a couple pop up. But it's it's just you can just watch that and listen to that all day. It's just like, yeah, it's so awesome. It's like I have zero skill on anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And I just watch those guys, and I'm just like, yeah. you win. <laughs> you're all you're all awesome. You all win. Mm-hmm. That's all that matters. Uh, well, hopefully at some point uh, I will uh, get to see you at a future, maybe perhaps at a future yes. ATL comic convention, as its official name is. Uh, stupid copyrights. But uh, <laughs> that's another long story. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. Tell everyone where they can read. What, where are your outlets? Where can they read your reviews? Where can they see you, listen to you? I'm a little everywhere. Uh, right now I started writing for uh, Murphy's Multiverse most recently. And then I also write for a outlet that's called Niger Nerds. Um, it's very, very specific to like African diaspora in the comic in- industry, in uh, film and video games, all of that. Um, I believe we found one another on Twitter at Jeff WP uh, one one. And I think that's about all. <laughs> there you so, go. so I'm around. <laughs> you are around everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and you're welcome to come back here anytime because uh, we're going to have more stuff to talk about. Yep. Speaking of Jonathan Majors, Creed three mm-hmm. in a couple weeks. Yep. Uh, seeing that on Tuesday or Wednesday. I, I believe think. that's a, I think that's a Wednesday night for yep. me, but I could be mm-hmm. wrong. Uh, but yes, that I believe is coming, but that's coming. So we can talk about that in the future. Mm-hmm. If you want, he uh, might be taking over. I he, think we need to get ready. Well, conquering, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> there you go. All right. And on that terrible Jonathan majors pun, uh-huh. thank you again, Jeffrey, uh, everyone. Thanks for uh, listening and or watching to the visually stunning movie podcast. As always, I have been Mark, your host. Don't forget to like us and follow us on social media at VS movie podcast, or go to the website, VS movie podcast.com. And until we talk to you again and or Jeffrey again, take it easy, stay safe. And we will talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.